Hey, what's good, everybody? It's me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, and you are watching and listening to a brand new episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And joining me, as always, is my co-host from the Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks podcast, Trav the Trash Man Martin. How you doing today, bro? Hey, I'm here and I'm ready. I'm excited. Hey, I'm excited, too, because the spooky season is rolling on and we have another incredible guest. And that is Mr. Lou Temple, professional actor, voice actor. The man has done it all. Lou, how are you doing today? Um, great, Mr. Banks. It's nice to be here, Travis. Good to see you. The trash man, Travis. Now I, <laughs> I, I told him it's no more trash man. Okay, then let's not do that anymore. <laughs> I'm, I, Bro, I've been calling I've been calling this man the trash man. And, and I know. I forgot what I changed it to. You I don't said, remember what I said. It was after we interviewed um uh Robert. Robert Robert Allen Mute. You gotta say the right. full name. It's like a trial call quest. And yeah. you said you weren't you weren't the trash man anymore. You were the Mr. Terrific or something. Oh yeah, yeah, there. terrific trash. That's what it was. Okay, yeah, I know, I won't terrific. I'm fine with all of that. Thanks for having me. <laughs> leveling up with Banks. That's pretty cool. I feel like I'm leveled up. Uh, I'm hey. currently in uh, Oklahoma City right now, uh, doing a film with uh, Danny Trejo and and. Vincent Ward and Efron Ramirez. Uh, it's a movie called the. It's a movie called Seven Cemeteries. Oh, wow, it's, nice! It's pretty cool. It's a supernatural thriller where uh, um, Mr. Trejo is given a second lease on life through a a Mexican bruja, which is a witch, mm -hmm. and she gives him the secret to resurrecting uh, his his former gang, his homies, so that we can take on a drug cartel, as you do. And um, <laughs> and in Texas, so we're the undead, or otherwise known as revenants. You know, we all had this huge respect after Mr. DiCaprio's movie for or for the revenant. Yeah, and, um, and we're sort of tearing that respect down with our revenants. <laughs> okay, I, like I never that. really, I, like that. I really never really knew what revenant meant. You know, because it's got that. It's got a high tone to it. It's yeah, a flower. It's one word. of those big words, you know it's what I'm a, saying? It's a it's it is and 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 it has reverence to it. But now that I know what it is, just the undead, um, mm -hmm. it's kind of silly. And so <laughs> I'm doing that a lot like this shirt that I'm wearing, um, for the color of October, orange. I like, I like it. I a Aren't you, you know, aren't you glad you you know that? <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I am. Uh, right. No, it's a uh, it's very Hawaiian themed. So yeah, it hey. is. Well, you know, I'm trying to keep the beach near this uh, uh, this middle of Midwest America and Oklahoma City, which is actually really nice. I'm I'm surprised uh, how comfortable the weather is here. Nice. Uh, probably the same in Virginia or wherever your audience is. Yeah, uh, here. I mean, because usually in Virginia, the weather it fluctuates like sometimes it could rain like earlier today it looked like it was going to rain and then the sun came out so it can definitely get crazy here in virginia usually with us it's like we always uh joke about like what we're supposed to wear outside because yeah. because you, you, could, you could wear some shorts and a t-shirt and then it's pouring down raining like we've even seen it sometimes where it's like on one side of the street it's raining and then on the other side of the street the sun is blazing so yeah it's, it's that, crazy that here old Virginia. that old adage if you don't like the weather wait around a few minutes it'll change mm -hmm. and uh <laughs> I, I, I know that about virginia and just about every place else in the world mm -hmm. uh can lay claim to that uh so leveling up with banks how do i do that uh trav how does he do that look man as soon, as soon as you come on this podcast, you've already leveled up. Uh, you know, you're leveling us up. We're leveling you up. You know, the vibe's going. Okay. Uh, yeah, I feel it. Right. It's, it's The energy is high. And, you right. know, one, one of the things I always say is, like, we're like Olive Garden here because when you're here, you're family. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention at the start of this interview is before we get into this interview, because we kind of already did, make sure that you like this video, you subscribe to the channel, and you hit that bell button, so that way you're always notified when we have new content here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And Trav, as D always says, because he's not here today. That's right, the podcast is in the description, and like, follow, and subscribe. Uh-huh. 
Uh, so another thing that I wanted to bring up too is there's, because there's the pitch. There, you know, you got that. Is. That's like a, the disclaimer mm-hmm. uh, that you you got it all covered up. So mm-hmm. I feel like I'm I'm leveled up now. I can be. <laughs> Hey, Woo. that's a hey, you didn't even have to jump and hit the brick and the mushroom came out. You didn't even have to do any of that. It now, one easy. thing I wanted to say before we uh, dive further into this interview is I wanted to say happy birthday. Your birthday. Oh, just passed. You. That's very cool. Thank you. Yeah. yeah October 2nd. Welcome. Interestingly enough, uh, you know, vote for Pedro um, uh, e- Efron. He he gave me a birthday gift and it was this scarecrow. Which nice. Is, not too scary. I think he's got a friendly face, you know. Um, and but scarecrows are scary. We all know mm-hmm. that. Oh, does the oh, scarecrow yeah. have a brain though? Uh, yeah. Well, that one was really fun. You know, if I only had a brain, he would Ray Ray Cod Kugler Codger. He was excellent. Not, I think uh, he had a lot of fun too. So uh, this isn't too scary a scarecrow, but I'm. Um, Happy to have it. And it was Efron's birthday. We went out to dinner and celebrated with some steaks and Mr. Trey. Hey, that's what I love to hear. Right. You ain't doing it right if you ain't getting a steak. How do you like your steaks? Uh, I like it rare. A okay. lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot like uh, $1,000 bills. Rare. Uh, <laughs> and so I I like, you know, my steak and I get a baked potato and maybe mm-hmm. something green on the side. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. But um the steak is the <laughs> and my thing about a steak is that i like to go at it because i like my steak to um even though it's not cooked a lot i like it not to cool down too much so i'm right. digging in and i'm knifing and fighting until the end <laughs> uh it's not a steak in a conversation with lou temple <laughs> it's just a steak and look at him go look at him go look at him go little guy eating a lot and so uh, Michael Rooker used to always enjoy going to, and he he would buy me steaks because he said, "I love I love watching you eat steak. You just you just go, you know, in ten minutes done. Whether Impression it's spot minutes, on, twenty four ounces, you know, whatever. And so that it's not that I'm chewing and not enjoying. It. It's just that I'm wanting to have the steak at its best. You yeah, know, that's right. I'll, I know when you're at the dinner table, and nobody's talking. It means the meal's good. So, that is I think true. so yeah, that is true. yeah. I recently just came back from Italy on a film, and they talk a lot during dinner, right? And, uh, and it always sounds like it's a it's an, an a opera or a tragedy. <laughs> you know, oh Travis, what's the matter with you, pasta pasta? What's the matter? Come on, Travis, you gotta eat, eat, come on, come on, come on. And you're like, oh no, what happened? And they're, they're just very happy. And there's a song to their voices. There's a song to the cadence of their speech, which is mm-hmm. uh, really good. And I think us Southerners have a little bit of that, but I don't know. Americans, we've kind of hammered flat the language, unfortunately, because you listen to French and German and Italian and Spanish. There's a lot of singing to those sounds. You right. Know? I really appreciate that. That's probably why whenever you watch a Disney movie, it's like whenever they're having dinner, like it's always a song or a story being told. Mm-hmm. Now, when you were over there, is it like how they I say- I was doing a Disney movie, as a matter of fact. Oh, for real? Mm. What Disney movie? Mm. It's called Rosaline and Juliet, which is oh. the Romeo and Juliet story. Apparently, Romeo, we all forgot, he dumped his girlfriend in the beginning of the- uh, of the play from Mr. Mm-hmm. Shakespeare. And that girl that he dumped was Rosaline and Rosaline was Juliet's cousin. And if he just stayed with Rosaline, um, things might've worked out better for him. And then this, you know, turns out he and Juliet had very little in common. I mean, yeah. it was good for a first date, but <laughs> they died. We don't really know how that would have ended, but Disney's going to let you know. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah Cause I, like I mean, that. I just like how, you know, since we're talking about Romeo and Juliet, like you have like all of these different versions of the story that has been told. And one of my favorites is the one that had Leonardo DiCaprio in it. I remember Mm -hmm. watching that when I was a kid back in the 90s. And I like how they modernized it and, you know, made it it made it cooler, you know, especially if you're a kid, because when you're younger, you know, you really don't watch like a lot of Shakespearean plays and stuff like that. And Shakespeare could wear you out. I mean, that Mm -hmm. is like, you know. That's like having to, you know, eat lima beans or go to bed early. Like, oh, mama, mama, you know. And uh, but you know, as we grow up, we are adults. It's funny how we 
like to go to bed early and lima beans aren't so bad but neither is shakespeare and mm -hmm. this is uh this is a retelling of that story loosely based and it won't uh it and it's for the fun it's for the fun factor but you're right the dicaprio that was baz lerman i think that directed yep. that and uh right. it was it made it very accessible as you say uh to young young yeah, audience, audience. Mm -hmm. and that's important because then that translates into well that shakespeare was kind of cool and then you mm -hmm. start investigating some of his other works and you realize wow there's some really there's some something for everyone a romantic comedy a, a mystery a horror you know there's something there so um he he, he was pretty good mm -hmm. so one question that we always ask all of our guests here on the pod is what is your origin story? Every hero or villain has one. So tell everybody who Lou Temple is. Mm, mm, that's a good one and my superpower. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I like yeah, it. I was a I was a child that was um, probably designed uh, to 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 watch, to observe, and but then also had. Um, the penchant to exhort or talk. So those two things don't really go hand in hand, you know, like when you're in the woods, shh, just listen. Mm -hmm. Like, what are we listening for? Look at that over there. Is that what we're looking for? No, oh, <laughs> yeah, I just saw a deer go by. What are we supposed to do? You know, like, so, but somehow all of that worked out. And for me, uh, there's, there, I, I hope for everyone, I'm gonna offer this little tidbits uh, as we go. But I just want you to be passionate, uh, or I hope right. that's what that's what I want for you as a human being is to have a passion, especially if you're a young human being, a childlike, and um, I don't. It doesn't matter what the passion is, but just something that that really kind of you know gets fuzzy inside of you. And for me, that was baseball. For whatever reason, my granddad took me down. Uh, you know, I wasn't very good. I never played. I was, you know, I might have even been afraid of the ball. But I really loved baseball, and that carried me through my childhood fanatically i mean right really, you know and so back then that was like you had to read a lot to get information it wasn't on the internet because there was none and it was my passion all the way through high school having played college scholarship gets me into a college in, in florida small liberal arts school rollins uh, I go out and play professionally uh, with the Astros, then transition that into a career, which has me scouting, evaluating players. Wow, that's um, crazy. So one of the traits of all of that was observation. I call it observation, but there's a certain survival technique. You know, like when you get in the ring, Mr. Banks, you know that you've got to size up your opponent. How do I fit in? How, of course. what are th some things I might need to do different or, oh, I see right there, there's a, you know, there's a weakness or there's a place that I, gives me an advantage or shoot, I better just hang on and roll with this, this boy. Cause he got some, you know, swag, whatever. And so I think I was really good at that. Maybe better at that than actually as a player, there's, there's survivors and there's ballers right and right. you're you're either one of the guys on the team that's only there so that the superstar gets to play and maybe i was that kind of guy but i learned an awful lot and then i was in houston texas working for the houston astros as the assistant director of minor leagues and scouting i was an executive i had nice suits company car expense report making a decent salary um living the life and i and i, I followed a, a young lady into a building to chat her up for uh, maybe uh a dinner and when i went into that building it was a theater and i saw what they were doing down on stage and i thought to myself i just it just hit me wow that's what i do i'm that why i should do that and uh i could do that and i i couldn't actually as much as in my head i thought i could but that i thought i could um, gave me the motivation to go and figure that out. So I slowly but surely pivoted and transitioned into acting from baseball. So in a certain right. sense, I'd had like two careers that you give both arms for professional baseball and acting. I'm, I'm very grateful and fortunate for, for both. And through that all, 
I want to say that I've understood where I fit and how to fit or survive or how to not survive. I think that's such a word of compromise or complacency. How do I help really? Right. How do I help? Um, how do I help my team win? How do I help my team uh, compete? How do I help this production tell the story? And so I'm, I'm good at understanding that, or I've grown that. That's a long origin story. I don't know if. Oh no, we hey, we love yeah. the long origin story because hey, we've had people come up here and their origin stories have been very short, but we always enjoy it when it's a very long one because you get into the nitty gritty. And I was going to ask you a question. And I wanted for you to finish your origin story. When you went into that restaurant where you saw the lady at, did you get a steak dinner? Oh, we had many, you know, she's, it's interesting. We're still friends and she takes a lot of credit for my acting career. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> have I, had I not been wearing it, those jeans, you might never become an actor. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think there's a point to that, you know, right. we, can, we can spin that in several ways. I'm uh -huh. sure. Thank I you. A, you buy. I'm uh, sure I had a steak. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm all about having a steak whenever I can get one. Mm -hmm. Um, and wherever I can get one. I'm in Oklahoma City right now. They have great steaks, obviously. Texas is a great place to have a steak. I think I had a nice steak over in Hampton. Uh, 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 Longhorn? No, it was another restaurant. It was more of a mom and pop. It was, uh, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it wasn't one of the franchise ones. Okay. But I've had steaks at Longhorn. Right. Yeah, yeah Long man. Longhorn. Was it called Finn? What was it? I said, was it called Finn? Uh, Finn, like F-I-N, like the end? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. That sounds familiar. That sounds familiar. I think I paid good for it. I think it yeah, was. Yeah, Finn, yeah. Finn, Finn is high dining. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I think that I think that might have been it, right? A, a, I if, that, that's, if that's it, you know, that's where uh, my ex-wife works, you know, oh, really? the mother she of my children. Said. And, you know, she could she could have served you that steak. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So we're, we're all connected somehow. That's I would right. say that if that were the case, I'm a I'm a good tipper. I'm a good tipper. Awesome. I got a tip for you. Uh, plant your corn early. That's what they say here in Oklahoma. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. No. What I I want to comment on something. You know, you just talking about playing your part, playing your position, knowing what your role is and what you're good at, and I. I really, really respect it. And I, I like people hearing that kind of stuff because, you know, as human beings, we're like so prideful and think that we should be the main character. We should be the star. And that's just not the case for most of us. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I really like getting into the mindset of just because you're not the guy, it doesn't mean you're not important to the overall production. Yeah. And I also think that you are the guy. You're the guy in your uh, your microcosm, like right. and I think I like that, that is that's important to know. You're just as important as another guy in their little microcosm, and together. Uh, and and the other thing I like to think about is you, we're all one. You know, I have uh, I, I, if 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 Leo DiCaprio is not successful in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, none of us are, right. and and he can't be without me actually. What right. I got to do, and I got to hold up my end of things to help him hold up his end of things. And so it's all interrelated. And and if we truly are in a universe where it, where we're all connected, which I th think that that kind of energy is, is real, then it doesn't matter who's getting the props. We're all getting right. the mm -hmm. gifts, you know, and I think it's a hard thing to get around. Um because we do give uh, accolades to those who really shine, you know? Right. And then I think then perhaps the internet becomes so popular because it's a place for you to really shine. You can be a star in your own world. And, uh, and I think that's good to understand and feel good about that. And you should take that out into the real world too. Mm -hmm. Right. Be, be supportive of that, you know? Uh, one of the things I liked, I think the two of you, when I asked about leveling up what that was, you mentioned, I think, uh, Mr. Banks, about energy. And I'm a big believer in energy. I love energy and I love the, 
I love creating energy because energy is how things happen. Mm -hmm. And when things aren't happening, it, 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 it's it, the energy level is is not appropriate. And it's I amazing you how you can change energy. You know, all of a sudden, I would have you get out of your chair and just woo. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you do that three times, hi, hi, whoo, if you get a little noisy and a little loud, things are going to change biochemically mm -hmm. in you and you're going to feel some adrenaline going and your heart's rushing a little bit. And now your eyes are, you know, you got some twinkle going and that's, that's energy. That's why right. athletes, you know, get themselves pumped up. Um, you know, we all make fun of uh, 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 Ric Flair with that whole thing, but there's an energy to that. And every, you know, like Mr. Banks is a wrestler, you know, there's an energy that's required yeah. uh, to do all of it. And I, I, it's so important. And if, you in a, if you're stuck, change your energy. You can't change your energy with your, your, your bottom on the seat. You really physically exactly. have to get mm -hmm. up. You have to change your physicality to change your energy so you have to move around and, and i'm do. sorry to cut you off but the piggyback off of that like one of the things that i always do before i go out to the ring is i i make sure that i'm always pacing and walking around so that way when i go through that curtain i'm full of energy because i always feel like if you're just sitting down in one spot it's like you're not you're not energized you know what i'm saying i feel like when when you when you're when i'm walking around i'm energized but when i go through that curtain i'm fully energized because i'm a character i'm larger than life and i love how you said that um you know you have to do something so that way that you can have that energy in you uh you know one of the things that i had told the guy at the gym yesterday when we were working out was that it doesn't matter how how big you are, how small you are. It doesn't matter if you're the strongest person or you're the fastest person. As long as you believe in yourself and you tell yourself that you're the strongest person in here and you're the fastest person in here, that's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, like you said, we are all on one path and uh, everybody, uh, one thing I always say is like, we go down different routes, but we're all on the same path, if that makes any yeah. sense. Yeah, it's the same highway. It's just got little, uh, you know, different levels that you're on. So I guess that's that's leveling up now. <laughs> uh, to counter or to to add add an addendum onto that, gentlemen, is that when you have this energy, then you have to channel it and use it. You know, mm -hmm. it, it you you it's like free flowing electricity. I always ask, well, why why do we still have cords? Well, we can't just let free ions of electricity randomly. We'd all be electrocuted, right? So we've got mm -hmm. to channel that that power, uh, which is through um, uh, a, a good, controlled, relaxed state. Mm -hmm. And so creating energy and then being able to guide it through a relaxation process, which might be meditation, a relaxation process that might be just some deep breathing. We see, you know, athletes or singers or anybody that performs take a deep breath, mm -hmm. yeah. channel to get in themselves, to be present. Those are those are all skills that everybody not only is capable of, but like can be really good at. You can that, that, that can be a skill that will always serve you. And I'm, I'm really into that place in our lives because I think that, that it's a hack. It's a buy, it's a hack. It's a biohack. It's a shortcut that you, you don't have to pay the dummy tax. Like I did spending mm -hmm. all my life as an ex athlete or as an athlete working hard, uh, you know, working hard is working on cement out in the street. Mm -hmm. uh, working difficult is solving, you know, math problems. But working smart is when you know it, you know it. Put your pen down. Go, go get some rest. Rest right. is rest is superfood, man. And mm -hmm. and so the idea that you're going to look over your lines until you're blurry eyed and you know them forwards and backwards, you know, you don't actually want that. You want to look at your stuff until you know it and then let it go. Mm -hmm. Go, go rest, go relax. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
And, and that way, when you deliver, it's very natural, it's very authentic, it's, yep. it, and, it, and it has a presence to it. So uh, these are all really hard lessons. You have to live some life to actually understand what those are. But if you can start getting your headspace to understand at a age youth, um, <laughs> you can get there quicker. And I right. think actually when, you know, we, I'm actually a big advocate of the YouTube generation and the TikTok generation because I do watch them and I see that they've overcome high stepped a lot of hurdles mm -hmm. that my generation got hung up on and, right. and wasn't able to overcome and they didn't even bother. I'm not going to wrestle with that. I'm just, I'm going to go over it or around it. I don't have to deal with whatever that was. Earning your stripes is one of them. Right, or, right. Yeah. Or, uh, um, you know, doing your time. That that doesn't play anymore. Mm -hmm. Almost nowhere, guys. Hate to say it. We were all raised like, or I was, you know, but that's not a player anymore. I work, I work for 23-year-olds that just show up and they're movie stars. Yeah. Right. Based and on, but based on them giving themselves permission to be so, yeah. and I actually have no problem with that. Yeah, okay? I love that. Yeah, they know I, what I love that they too. know what they need to do. You know, they know what they need to do. I used to go, well, they they haven't had any experience. They don't know what to do. They do know what to do, and they may not be as you know reverent to like, hey, you're an OG or respectful. You know that doesn't matter. They'll they'll get that in time, and they just maybe the thing is they're so. I think they're they're no fault to the generation in place now, but they're not allowed to experience as much because it's moving so fast. Whatever yeah. is required of them, so they're not getting to experience, and all of a sudden it's they'll come to a guy like me and go, wow, you really, you're really dug in. That's really cool what you do. I, I mean, I never thought about saying it the way you did, or mm -hmm. that's an interesting take on the character. I just never saw that. And it's really great. And clearly I read it one way and you do it a different way. And that's why you're here. I know why I'm here, but I like what you got. You know, those people that do that type of thing, are going to get it right and you go through life without smelling the roses for lack of a better term you, you you might miss out but go ahead and be big proclaim take what's out there but recognize it's all about the lesson and the light and the love and whatever gets in the way of that interference corrosion ego well we all go through that but you got to clean that up because you, you better you better know it's just all about a lesson it's not really about the applause it's about the lesson mm -hmm. you go yeah. out there and get your butt whooped and it stings it's hurt your ego's beat <laughs> up but somewhere you're going to sit down and go oh i get it mm -hmm. uh-huh uh oh yeah i i i see it Mm -hmm. I, I get it. Yeah. All right. I might make that mistake again, but I'm going to be better prepared to not, and I'll learn from it. And you know what? I appreciate getting my ass kicked right there because I never would have right. thought about getting Rocky you know, mentality. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. so anyway, that's a lot of philosophy we're throwing around. Hey, no, hey, hey, and, and, we, and it's hey, for free, ladies and gentlemen. It is free. Yeah, it is free. Hey, I don't, I don't know if you know who uh, Bo Billingsley is, but he's an actor and voice actor. And uh, is he have... related to Barbara Billingsley, the former actress that was Miss uh, Mrs. Cleaver from Leave It to Beaver? I, no. I don't think so. Okay, yeah. but okay. no, but when he when he was up here, like you know, he was just dropping a lot of knowledge too, and. You know, we always appreciate it because it's like you said, I mean, like you might not consider yourself an OG trap. Who did we have up here? And they didn't know what an OG was. We was interviewing somebody. It was Robert. No, it wasn't Robert. It was somebody else. And oh, okay. it was somebody else we was interviewing. And like they uh, thought that it was John. John. Yes, John Swayze. And he oh, was yeah. just like, he thought that OG stood oh. for old, old goat. Old, old guy. Old yeah, guy. Old guy. Yeah. And it's like, 
I just feel like, you know, you always have to give the people. Who hey, I pain. love I love John Swayze. He and I used to do voiceover together. Hey, right. hey y'all are both in bubblegum crisis, I believe. Yeah, that's yep. right. We See, look at that, man. Trav, look, this is what we do here on Leveling Up with Brent. Yeah, right. and, and we did a movie together about uh, air traffic controllers, which is a really high pressure job. You can imagine trying to land these jets with a lot right. of, you know, uh, it's it. And so it was really great. And, but John and I are friends, longtime friends, Houstonians. Uh, mm. Let's talk about the voiceover thing for a minute because that's so interesting. Nice segue. John's a, a Texan, Houstonian. And that's where we started to do this was uh, in a little warehouse space called uh, ADV. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they yep. were kind of on the, the, the brink they were the cutting edge of purchasing Japanese titles and then voice dubbing them and they're like well who would we get uh well there's these actors why don't we just hire actors and we didn't have any inclination there wasn't really at that time there was of course but it was Hollywood bound but in Houston Texas there wasn't a you weren't a voice actor or a theater actor or television right. film actor you were just an actor you did everything mm -hmm. and you were all things to all men so to speak and <laughs> so they they hired us and we we're getting paid to go like talk but it had to be translated and we were matching back then lip flaps right mm -hmm. and so you know these are two different languages uh japanese and, and english and so some words had to be clipped some words had to be stretched out it was really a challenge and it was it was it was a lot of work but i thought we did a good job in those early anime i'm sure there's a quality that's lacking but um there was yeah. for for what we felt like was we were getting paid and probably way underpaid no doubt we were very happy and interestingly kind of cut our teeth there and it, it kind of opened up my sensibility to character work mm -hmm. using your voice, which now I actually, as an actor, that's one of my real sharp tools is my voice, my inflection, my delivery, my cadence. All of those things are a big part of what I use because I don't look like Brad Pitt, for instance. And mm -hmm. And I kind of developed that through voice work early on at ADV. I mean, you might be reading for a little girl. Uh, you might be reading for some huge, you know, mo robotant monster. Yeah. yeah. Or it, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, John made good on it. Obviously, he's got a great career. Or someone like Spike Spencer or Amanda Wynn or Tiffany right. Grant. Mm -hmm. You know, all these people. We all, or Jason Douglas, my, maybe my best friend. Jason Douglas has done a lot of anime. I think he's on Dragon Ball Z now. Yeah. I've, I've slid in his DMs. I've tried yeah, to get crazy. him up here. They, they, you and Jason are so close because that's another OG. So, you know, uh, yeah. our, our yeah. age. Group. Yeah. And, 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 and I brought him over there. You know, right. I'm like, hey, there's this crit. They'll pay you to talk. Oh, you. <laughs> so you had on the jeans this time and he yeah. followed you. Okay. I mean, yeah. well, well, Travis, exactly. it's just like how Lou was saying back when he was doing the scouting for baseball i mean it's kind of the same thing when it came to voice acting and even when it comes to acting you know what i'm saying right. it's just like one person gets their foot in the door and then they look out for their boys that's that's how it is the adam sandler effect yeah it's the best way to be interesting because we've all been in that place where we recognize this is not easy you know right. again i don't it's like not. using the word hard because I, I i think hard is a definitive word about texture Mm -hmm. <laughs> like cement's hard. This is not. This is not easy. This is difficult. Because and there's only one job. But when you get to a beautiful place where there's one job for all of us, right? This might not be mine. It could be Jason's, and, mm -hmm. I, and I hope it is. Or it could be Travis's. Or but I'm gonna get mine. Mine's right. Mine's there. There's more. So when you start living in a world of more than enough, instead of right. a world of there's not enough, I'm gonna get mine and keep it secret, or a world there's just enough, I'm gonna get mine and get by. Mm -hmm. But the minute you change your mindset to there's way more than enough for all of us, 
it starts showing up. And I've always that- felt like that too. There's enough yeah. out here for everybody. Yeah. I hate I hate when you read online like you know not everybody can be this, and it's like, well why can't, why not? Like yeah, who, all you got to do is show them the way. Who, who said yeah. Yeah, exactly. Show me how you did it and mm-hmm. let me take that and kind of figure out my own way. Yeah, bit. that'd be one of my first pieces of advice. When you're looking to go do something, look up the road at who's doing it mm-hmm. that you are fashioning yourself after and ask them, hey, could you tell me how you did it or do you know anyone who could help? Can mm-hmm. you help or do you know anyone who can help? And it's in people's nature to help, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. That's that's what our our essence is to help one another. And so if we're if we're asked, oftentimes we'll answer. Mm-hmm. Now this is- most of us don't ask. Most of us uh I know how to get there. You know um, what? It's a pride thing. I was I don't well, need I'm to pull, also I don't I'm need to pull over for there. directions. I I know where I'm going. I don't <laughs> No, I, I've, you know, there's sometimes, you know, banks will be like, you know, hey, man, I'm going to slide in his DMs, as he likes to say. And I'm like, dude, that guy ain't got time for us. So I've been a victim to that mentality, too. You know, I'm not I'm not happy go lucky all the time. Hey, hold on. That's not me. You you meant D. Like, I stay sliding in the DMs. No, I said you will. And my response to that is like, dude, that guy ain't going oh, to respond to us. I rewind it. He's up here and we're down here. Yeah, you know I, always, I, mean? but, I always slide in DMs because I always say you never know what they're going to say. They can either say yes, no, or they may not respond at all. And I mean, like, to go back to Jason, like, back when we first started our podcast, like, I had commented on his instagram and i was just like hey i sent you a message to see if we could interview you and he said he had never got the message but it's because um if you're not following each other on instagram like that message just goes into like uh what is it called Trav? like the message request and i'm sure like yeah, you know message he's, request he's popular so it's like i'm sure like his message request is is filled with messages so he's never going to see that but like i yeah. always i always go and then even with lou you know i saw that the horror convention was here in town and i always say you know it's best to go and do something in person than do it online or over the phone because if somebody comes to your town and you have an opportunity to network then why wouldn't you do that you know what i'm saying like it's it's all about growing and getting to where you want to be at in life That's what has I jason done your show no. No, no, no yeah like i said I, I we started back in 2018 and this was when we first started but uh i'll i'll, I'll shoot him another message yeah he will he I'll will I, at this time i'll be like hey lou sent us yeah <laughs> <laughs> from big brother lou that's right that's right, that's right. Yeah, i'll be like yeah lou hey lou lou gave the word man that, um, that lou, oh go ahead Trav. no i wanted to ask man because i i'm a huge you know rock guy and I came up on, you know, that that new metal stuff and White Zombie coming out and then Rob Zombie coming out. And you've just done so much stuff with with Rob to make me feel like you have some sort of relationship with sure. him. I yeah. mean, what is that like being friends with, you know, a rock icon? Like, you know, you yeah. got Ozzy Osbourne and Rob Zombie's up there with guys like that. Yeah. And if you haven't seen him and it sounds like you have, Travis uh his show is amazing and talk about energy on stage so he brings a lot of that same energy uh on set when he's directing and so he has a certain level of intensity so when he's like i want you to grab this guy you know take the knife and you're like whoa okay Uh, i see now i see where that is but i always say about rob he knows what he wants and he wants what he knows but he's a really regular guy right Ultimately, he is a, a huge fan of the genre, like the people that he makes his product for. He's just like them. He knows what he would want to see. Mm-hmm. And so he keeps he, 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 he keeps really in that lane and it always serves his audience. And I think he's just gotten better and better at storytelling. I think he's getting better as a musician. He keeps going and playing he's got a great band right now yeah 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 um, he's still got Johnny know, Five with him so Rob's thing was this like uh, growing up as a kid he he wanted to be you know 
he wanted to be in the arts like all of us. Right. I want, I, you know, he didn't want to be an athlete. All right. So you guys probably did, but I, I did too. But so he was like, he liked to draw and, mm -hmm. and graphic novels and comic books. And so I want to be, um, you know, a comic book guy. And, but who's going to look at my comic books? I'm nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he just decided I'm going to be somebody. And, Am I going to be an at? No, I'm not going to be a famous Boston Red Sox. <laughs> uh, am I going to be an actor? No, no one gets to act. They're actors, you know, what is an actor? I mean, growing up in Massachusetts, you wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. And okay, uh, what about a rock star? Oh, that'd be good. Well, I don't sing very well. I'm not a very good guitarist. Where do I fit in the music industry? Oh, heavy metal and that's kind of my thing I, I can maybe do that i could get through that and so then he recognized this and he kind of reinvented a genre in yeah. a, like a sub genre in the metal genre right yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. it's kind of got this real pop vibe to it interestingly and it's fun and it's uh but you know you go to any gym and somebody might be listening to white zombie or rob zombie you know throwing up some some weight hey, uh -huh. and you didn't even know yeah and so he's he's really smart as you can well imagine and he's really good at what he does um because he cares mm -hmm. and he's paid the dummy tax but he's also a guy that's walked over the hurdles mm -hmm. like oh that's gonna cost a lot of money he couldn't do that rob he's like ah, I, I can i'm going to and he just does mm -hmm. he's like nike he just does it and so, <laughs> yeah, and so uh, he's a great example and a good friend. He and his wife, Sherry, they have each other's back. Sherry mm -hmm. from Zombie. Uh, yeah. I've never seen a couple who just support each other as much as the two of them do. He makes every movie for her, and she only does movies for him. And she doesn't let one person say a bad thing about him, right. why would they? And nobody says anything bad about her. They better not. And mm -hmm. so it's really kind of cool. They have moved back uh, to Hollywood and they're really into looking out for animals who are in, you know, in need, um, like not to get eaten. <laughs> as, yeah, we're yeah, talk yeah. as we're talking about steaks, uh, they're, <laughs> they've become <laughs> vegans. So when I work for Rob, it's a vegan set and I have a tofu steak, I guess. Um, hey, and it's nothing wrong with vegan food either. Like uh, my friends, when they had their wedding, that's all they had there was vegan food. And I know a lot of people knock it, but vegan food is, they have some pretty good choices. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. Yeah, vegan food done well or just done is really good. You're right, you're right. Mm -hmm. And so Rob's great and I, I'm grateful to have had worked with him and to have a friendship with him. And, and I, I recognize that and I hold it dearly, yeah. That's awesome. Um, and the thing is, is like when he's your director, well, you're both, like pulling on this rope but when you go to his concert to your point travis he's a rock star he i is. mean he's a rock star and it, it's an arena that's rocking to him and and it's it's impressive yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah stage show is top notch and again you know now that you know he's with john five with him he used to be with Marilyn Manson back in the day yeah. John Five's another one he just adds to the show you, yeah the you can't band, keep your eyes off of these guys the band's tight yeah yep. and Rob really enjoys it he I, th there was a time when I thought he was going to get out of music altogether right and he's doing as much music as he ever has right now mm -hmm. hey put out an incredible album this year so yeah yeah it's mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. so the question I have for you next is because Lou, you've been in so many awesome projects, like yep. from being a sheriff to being a murderer. Like, what are some of your favorite projects that you've worked on? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, you know, they're all sort of like children, so you don't want to like single one out, but I do, you know, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, and I always break it down into genres or spec specificity of the type. So starting with television, and I don't do as much television as actually I would like, but clearly uh, The Walking Dead was a very special gift, a very special opportunity to play Axel in season three, one of the prisoners mm -hmm. uh, that was based on the character in the graphic novels. Right. And it was 
it was something I couldn't conceive how great it was going to be. I didn't know the show at that point was popular, but it wasn't popular to the point of where it began. And so right. I had seen the comics or graphic novels come across my desk because I have some horror pedigree. And I was like, this is way too violent. They're never going to make a television show about this. And lo and behold, most popular show ever. And just the family and the collaboration of the production and through writers, producers, actors, camera department, wardrobe, makeup, everyone pulling on the same side of the rope to do the very best possible job to give the audience the very best entertainment and then to even try to one up and that the next week. So mm -hmm. that was a really incredible experience that I hadn't planned for, considered that that could happen. And I'm so grateful that I got to work with a guy like Andrew Lincoln or Norman Reedus or Melissa yeah. McBride or Sarah Wayne Callies, John Berenthal on that show and watch like really great craftsman work. So, so for television, Walking Dead, on the studio feature film, you know, studio being the big the big player in the movie theater and and uh, and and having some life. Um, Unstoppable is a movie I did mm. with uh, for Tony Scott, who I'd done three movies with. He's a, a great action director, suspense thriller. Uh, this was with Denzel Washington and Chris Pine, Rosario Dawson. Mm -hmm. And uh, the train is unmanned and speeding for a small town in Pennsylvania uh, where it's going to blow up with some petrochemicals on it. And mm -hmm. uh, just a great, and I, I got to be part of the end of the story from the beginning to the end right. and be a hero at the end. It was just such an experience. And that, that was Tony Scott's last film, right? It was Tony's last right. film. God bless him. And it was so sad that, uh, that he left us and he was such a great, uh, people asked me about working with him and it was like it, working with- He's a legend. Who, legend. Like, yeah. uh, le and it was so fun. It was like working with Willy Wonka, you know? Right. Your favorite uncle. It was just everybody, his personality was infectious and he was, uh, he demanded a lot, but you wanted to give a lot for him, you know? So it was, it was ideal. Right. And that was such a movie that I think it did well. It was at a time in Denzel's career where people were like, oh, is he still got it? And he's like, you bring me the best kid actor, the best young man, and I'll show you that I still got it. And, and yeah. he did. And It was a and good movie. Was, yeah, it, it's yeah, a good movie. Exactly. And I'm really proud to be part of it. And so, and it was yeah. really a great experience in so many ways. My character, Ned Oldham, was by himself quite a bit in the cab of a truck. So you kind of got to keep the balls in the air. And mm. uh, Tony let me develop some things that maybe weren't on the page. And I'm right. forever, forever grateful to, to land that character in that movie. And then an independent movie, we do so many, I, I do so many independent films and they're all great again. But now and again, there's one that sort of steps out. And for me, this was a movie that I did, a little romantic comedy called Waitress. Mm. And uh, this is uh, with Kerry Russell and Nathan Fillion, Jeremy Sisto, Cheryl Hines, and Andy Griffith. Uh, right. Oh, wow. Father of America at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yep. So this was a little movie that went to Sundance. Uh, there was a tragedy with it. The director and one of the writer director, one of the stars, Adrian Shelley, was murdered during the edit. Mm -hmm. and, wow. And and um, and her death uh, kind of it marked the, you know, the Sundance. But then the movie was so beautiful in its own quirky way that there was, you know, a ray of sunshine on it. And it's since been developed into a Broadway musical uh, mm -hmm. that uh, Sarah Bareilles uh, does. And um, uh, it's had a nice run and it was just such a good feeling. Uh, like when you come home from college and you go see your friends that first night at the bar, just that reconnect and right. just good to be home. It felt like home is that, that so. Uh, so those are three movies that in our efforts that stand out for me as some of my favorites. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Brian? 
again, that's incredible. And I just want to say, you know, rest in peace to Tony Scott and for sure. Um, Rid- Ridley Scott is my favorite director of all time, and both yeah. of them are just incredible. I don't know if those guys have ever made a bad movie that I've seen. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's and just it's incredible. It's interesting. To work with them. it's interesting how their movies are different. Man. So different. <laughs> yeah, Tony, like straightforward. Tony could care less about details or continuity. Right. Keep moving forward and keep it crazy. And Ridley's very nuanced and very, mm-hmm. you know, detail and cerebral, and and they're just wonderful filmmakers, no doubt. Um, Ridley paid me a nice compliment at the premiere of Unstoppable that I'll never forget. He said, "You had an impossible task to be a man on an island in that truck, and and you did it. You pulled it off. So be be." proud of that so that's yeah. super cool that's, yeah. that being said i've never worked for ridley scott so yeah but <laughs> geez, give, me, man, give you your flowers I, I love that man yeah yeah absolutely so um yeah we're getting towards the end of this thing and we kind of got like a famous question nice. at the end that normally d always asks, but unfortunately gonna be here with us tonight so where d where d at what's what these these hey. got other things to do uh he's in the submarine under the sea and uh, uh, he's trying he to save that. he's trying to save uh the planet earth because it, earth it's, right a, it's, a, it's a haunted submarine and uh you know <laughs> it's, it's up to deep because it's the spooky season you know he's trying to save us so uh D, I got yeah we I, get it. Doing. I get it he's I ghost busting right now good, good on you d and uh stay para abnormal that's uh-huh. right but um yeah, you know, and I can't actually wait to really get your answer on this, but, you know, kind of as a kid growing up, what is a movie? Because usually the question for us is, like, from the 80s and 90s, yeah. what stuck with you. But really, you know, for you coming up, you can even go earlier. For sure. So, like, what what movies did, uh, like, really stuck with you when you were coming up? Like, yeah. what horror movie? Well, it's interesting because I... I saw horror movies, but my horror movies were more um, the occasional Hammer films of Frankenstein, yeah, yeah. Dracula, the, yeah, the Wolfman. Um, so the more creature features, so to speak. So um, things like Texas Chainsaw Massacre or um, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, Rosemary's Baby was really scary for me. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, that still holds is, up. That's yep. my favorite horror film because i think it's psychological terror and that's sort of my sensibility uh but horror maybe i wasn't exposed to it as much as i've become active in it for sure Mm -hmm. and um uh but but there were some movies and they would always of course be cowboy movies a john wayne movie Mm -hmm. um the Cowboys, because those were young boys. Uh, it's one of the few movies John Wayne ever died in. Might be the only one other than the last one he did, McClintock, I think. Um, cool Hand Luke, I love Paul Newman, so Cool right. Hand Luke was a real favorite of mine. Bullet might have been the first movie that I ever saw. It was a crazy car chase wow. with Steve McQueen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, people say, what's your favorite movie? And I remember it as a kid. And it was a little bit like Lima Beans, but then it stuck with me. And today it still sticks with me. It's a wonderful life. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's a classic. Yeah. Right. yeah. So that, that is still one of my faves. And uh, I think I still well up with tears. No man who has friends is a failure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's something that uh, I I'll always remember the first time I ever saw it. I was a kid and... Uh, my aunt, of course, it was in black and white, and like we right. was just like, "What is this movie?" Because my aunt, she she always put Christmas movies on during the holidays. Sure, and you know, us being kids, it's just like we're not trying to watch this, but then it's just like we're watching it. And it's just like wow, it's just like nobody knows who he is, and it's like it's 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 a really good story. I don't know it if is. it's been if it's been remade or not, but if it has, no, don't it watch hasn't. the remake. Watch the classic. Yeah, yeah, it hasn't been remade. No, it hasn't. I don't know. I was gonna say I don't know if anything from Frank Capra has been remade, and he's got an incredible career. I'm like, uh, yeah. my, my favorite movie of his might be It Happened One Night. Yeah, I, I love great that movie. film. It's a great so, movie. Yeah, I don't think anything from Frank Capra has really been remade. 
Maybe he's got a memoratorium on it that you don't get to do that. Right. Uh, like an <laughs> unwritten Hollywood rule that you don't yeah. do that. You know, you don't do that. Uh, but then there's some great movies that I fall in love with. Oh, I like I like Guillermo del Toro's take on fairy tales. I love Pan's Labyrinth. Oh, mm-hmm. I just uh, watched Crimson Peak last night. Yeah, yeah. I love uh, I love the Babadook. Is a is a really mm-hmm. psychological tear. I love Beasts of a Southern Wild. Uh, I thought was delicious and delightful. Um, there's so much good product out there and television for sure. Now we're all watching. Um, different things on Netflix and Hulu and Amazon right, nice. we can binge and it's uh it's impossible to see everything but yep. you certainly have a chance to see something that's the truth mm-hmm. it's like yeah. my granddad used to say there's a there's a seat for every bottom that's I like true. that uh-huh hey one thing I always say is that uh in a bag of Skittles if you pour all of them on the table everybody is going to have a different flavor that they like and that's how it is when it comes to television and movies there's something out there for everybody yeah that's the truth that's the truth so Lou, i just want to say thank you so much for joining us during the spooky season and coming up here right. on leveling up with benjamin banks i feel leveled up and i feel like i've got my spooky energy yeah hey, i love it i'm hear. ready to i'm ready to blow through that curtain I'm going to relax and I'm going to use my good energy to be present and provide. And uh, I'm going to ask your audience on Leveling Up with Banks to uh, to try it. You might like it, like lima beans. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So uh, before we let you go, let everybody in social media land know where they can find you at. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I do Twitter. So I'm Lou Temple actor at Twitter. When we did The Walking Dead, we started Twitter and I've just stayed on it. My Instagram got taken down because I got fished, hacked, and then they exploited my account and mm. the algorithm got mad. And so I've never, I've never bothered to re-up on Instagram. Unfortunately, I know that's everybody's go-to and I'm just not there. And um, uh, you can see what I'm doing on IMDb. And then uh, I do a little Patreon thing called the Texican where you can for five dollars subscribe and get to see some behind the scenes on movies like this or see some preparation for auditions and big uh, you know going into the rooms with you know scorsese to read for you know a role or uh, just how to go about telling a story every man must tell his or her story you can't walk to learn to tell it and uh um, like and i like to help so that's the texican on patreon Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Trav, let them know where they can find you at in social media land. That's right again, Lou. I, this has been incredible. You have been more than blessed us with knowledge and po- number of positive energy. So mm-hmm. you know, thank, thank you for blessings to you. And um, you can find me on the Instagram at ZK Audio. And then I'm also on the Twitter at T-R-A-V-I-O-S-C-K. And you can also find me on Letterboxd and check out my movie rankings. And uh, Banks, where are they going to find podcast number one hero? You can find me at Hero Benjamin Banks at King Benji underscore Banks on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on Facebook at Benjamin Banks. I should be the first person to pop up. If not, then I need to contact Mr. Zuckerberg. Thank you again, everybody, for watching our interview with Mr. Lou Temple. Make sure that you check out some more of our interviews that we have here on the channel, along with reaction videos and reviews. Make mm-hmm. sure you check out our podcast where we drop new episodes every Tuesday. And then the video of that episode will be up here on YouTube that Friday. Like I always say, keep that pinky up. Stay positive. We'll see you next time on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Peace. Thank you for watching a brand new episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Make sure that you hit that like button and you subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell button so that way you're always notified when we have new content on our channel. Make sure you check out our podcast where we release new episodes every Tuesday and the video of that episode is uploaded on Friday. And you can find new episodes of our podcast on all podcast platforms. Make sure you follow all the Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks social media accounts at Leveling Up Banks on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, we have a Patreon. If you're feeling generous and would love to donate to us, it's at Leveling Up Banks. And huge shout out to our patrons. We really appreciate you and thank you for the support. We'll see you next time on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks.